Any, any more mail? Mm -hmm, I've got a letter from my mother. But you know she's a little worried about my sister Hazel. Why? Well, when she wrote the letter, Hazel had just flown from downtown and she thought a man was following her. What made her think that? He was in the phone booth with her. <laughs> well, that should have given her a little hint. What, uh, what are you looking for? Oh, my purse. Gracie, don't tell me that you mislaid your purse again. Mm -hmm. When people mislay things, it's pure carelessness. And not only that, it's stupid and it's unnecessary. Oh, well, don't worry, dear. I mislay things, too. <laughs> Gracie, I wish you'd stop being careless. Well, I'll try, dear. But I guess I just take after my cousin John. Do you know that he was so careless that he parked in the red zone? Suppose he got a ticket. <laughs> well, we don't know. The Russians won't let him write to us. <laughs> The Russians? Mm -hmm. The red zone was in Berlin. Oh, that red zone, yes. Gracie! Oh, um, I'll be right down, Blanche. Dear, if you find a purse, remember it's mine. I'll remember, I'll remember. Well, anyway, Gracie, you were very lucky you didn't go shopping with me. The stores were so crowded. Yeah, but I still want to see those new fashions. Yeah. You know, everybody in the store say that we're not going to be wearing our dresses as long as we used to. Oh, my goodness. If we don't, then we'll just have to go to bed sooner, won't we? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, Grace, you're just going to love those two dresses that I picked up at the May Company. Say, Blanche, when I get through with the dishes, will you come upstairs with me and help me look for my purse? Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there's that lovely watch. I've always admired it. Uh huh. George gave me that on our last anniversary. Wish Harry'd be as sweet to me. I always leave it there, you know, when I wash the dishes. Mm. Ah, Gracie, I envy you. Oh, Blanche, don't envy me. If Harry won't let you wash dishes, you can always come over here and do it. Come on. <laughs> so, Harry, Gracie is just getting very careless. Now, I found this watch on the drain board. I want you to hide it for me. I'm going to teach you a lesson. Well, why bother, Joy? Because it'll stop her from doing silly things. Are you planning to go into bankruptcy? <laughs> Harry, you just hide the watch. Okay. Here. I'll hide it here in the sugar bowl. All right. Well, thanks, Harry. George, I have asked you repeatedly not to drop ashes in that cup. Oh, I'm sorry, Harry. You know, it's not an ashtray. I won that in college for pole vaulting. George, you know, when you do things like that, it shows your lack of breeding, your, your lack of social background, your essential crudeness. You know, you should be thoroughly ashamed of yourself. I am, Harry. And uh, I owe you an apology. Oh, forget it. Okay. <laughs> That's what I came over about is my wristwatch. It's gone. Gone? I feel terrible. Do you know where it could be? Oh, that beautiful watch. I just saw it on your drain board. Not there now. Oh, well, must be someplace. Yeah. I've looked everywhere else. <laughs> you probably just mislaid it, honey. Now, you relax. Come on in. I'll fix you some coffee, huh? Gracie, please put the sugar and cream on the table. I'll get the coffee. All right. My watch. Oh, this is awful. Oh, Blanche loved it so much she took it. I'm going to put it back. She'd be upset if she knew I took something she stole. I wonder if she... No. If she took my purse, I don't want to know it. Blanche! Blanche, never mind the coffee. I, I can't stay. Why not? Well... Don't worry, I'll never tell. I bet you think I'm wasting my time trying to teach Gracie a lesson, but I'm not. Nobody is too old to learn. I ought to know because I've straightened Gracie out before and I've always learned something. <laughs> like the time I taught her a lesson on how to economize. I said I'd give up smoking cigars if she'd give up her silly hats. And it worked fine. For the next 80 days, I didn't smoke any cigars, and she didn't smoke any hats. <laughs> of course, Gracie isn't the only woman who's careless. A friend of mine, Bonnie Dean, his wife divorced him, and she took everything. 
took all his money, took the house, the children, the furniture, the car, the jewels, and his insurance. But she was careless. Forgot to take his electric razor. <laughs> of course, men are careless, too. I know a man who had a, a leaky gas furnace in the basement. Lit a match and went down to find the leak. Was careless. Fell down the stairs and nearly killed himself. <laughs> Took him to the hospital and, you know, it was pretty near three months before he was well enough to strike another match and go down and blow up the furnace. <laughs> Carelessness was bad, but so was forgetfulness. A friend of mine, a director, Mervyn Leroy, was telling me that he knew a cowboy actor who was forgetful and lost his job. This fella could ride, rope, shoot, and play the guitar. But he couldn't remember where to point when he said they went that away. <laughs> Of course, Gracie could stop billing in that department, too. She once decided to fix me some corned beef and cabbage for dinner and left out the corned beef. But I didn't miss it because she forgot to put in the cabbage. <laughs> Do you know when I give Gracie money, she, 10 minutes later, she can't remember whether I gave her $10 or $100? And, and, and come to think of it, that works out real nice. I can't believe it. But it's true, Harry. No, I don't care about finding my watch and Blanche's sugar bowl. But what worries me is she told me that she picked up two dresses at the May Company this morning. Gracie, are you trying to tell me that Blanche Morton is a kleptomaniac? No, you just told me that. All I told you is that she steals things. That's what kleptomania means. Oh. Well, why do people do things like that? Well, I've heard that it's caused by a feeling of insecurity. For instance, the wife of a friend of mine stole things because she felt her husband wasn't showing her enough love and affection. Maybe Mrs. Morton feels that way. Oh, well, why would Blanche want your friend's husband to give love and affection? I don't know. You know, I'm afraid the May Company might arrest Blanche. We've got to help her. Well, you... We. Goodbye. <laughs> Wait, wait a minute. But look, if, if the dresses are returned before the May Company finds it out, Mrs. Morton won't be in any trouble. That's a good idea. We'll return the dresses. Yeah, well, let go of my coat. And while you're talking to the Mortons out front, I'll sneak in the back way and get the dresses. No, 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 no. Gracie, I wouldn't know what to say. I wouldn't know when you were through. Well, I'll give you a little signal. I'll drop the coffee pot. <laughs> oh, I've changed my mind. I think it's a wonderful idea, Gracie, and I'll do it. Let go of my coat. No. Well, Gracie, we're here. Here's the Morton house. Let go of my coat. No. Oh, Gracie, wait. If you drop the coffee pot, they'll think there's a burglar inside. What would a burglar be doing inside that coffee pot? Let go of my coat. No. Here, Blanche, hold it. Hello, Mrs. Martin. What's this? That's my coat. Oh, I, I just got it, and uh, Gracie wanted you to feel the material. Very beautiful. Thank you. Say, Harry, could you step out here for a minute? I just heard a very funny joke, and I wanted to tell it to you both. A joke? Yeah. Hello, Von Hi. He, um, wants to tell us a joke. A joke? Yeah. Uh, uh, this uh, fella is going to Pittsburgh, and all he can get is an upper berth. I heard that. And, oh. Well, this, uh, this other fella, he goes into a restaurant, and he says to the waiter, do you serve crabs in here? I heard that. Oh. Did, did you hear the one about the taxi driver whose passenger is rubbing sauerkraut in his hair? No. Oh. You heard it? Good. I heard it. What's right. the matter with him? He must be spending too much time with Gracie. Come on. Oh, the coffee pot fell off the stove. Good thing there wasn't any coffee in it. Blanche, as I was saying, our household accounts for this month are in wretched shape. Well, maybe you should call in a CPA. 
I am a CPA. <laughs> and Blanche, you're spending entirely too much money. Two brand new dresses today. Oh, Harry, calm down. Don't you want a wife that's stylish and attractive? No, dear, I'll stick it out with you. <laughs> that's about as funny as Mr. Von Zell's coat. Hmm? Oh, I was only joking. Actually, you're quite well preserved. <laughs> well preserved? Well, I like that. After I've given you the best years of my life, I've worked and I've slaved for you. Harry Morton, let me tell you something. I could have been married dozens of times before I met you. Charlie Hawthorne asked me six times. Well preserved. What am I, a woman or a jar of pickled peaches? And another thing I want to say to you. Blanche, you're a woman. You can put a lid on a jar of pickled peaches and shut it up. <laughs> Yeah, there isn't enough starch in them. Blanche, don't be uncouth. Blanche, don't be uncouth. You get stuck here every day. I don't know what I ever saw in you. Well, I can tell you what you saw. A gentleman of distinction, an excellent athlete, tennis, boxing, pole vaulting. <laughs> George was here. Yeah. Swimming? Oh, well, you should have gotten one for swimming. You're a very good swimmer. Oh, dear. I remember one night you took me for a canoe ride on the lake. And there we were in the moonlight, two miles from shore. And I leaned over and asked you for a kiss. And you jumped overboard and swam home because we weren't engaged. <laughs> Dad would have wanted it that way. Dear old Dad. Oh, now, Blanche, let's stop snapping at each other. You know, really, I'm glad you bought those dresses. And I know you're going to look lovely in them. Oh, thank you, Harry. Oh, you're going to like them. I know you are. Look, yeah? yeah. They're gone. Gone? We must have been robbed. Why? I'd better call the police. Police Department, Detective Sawyer speaking. I want to report a robbery. Two dresses have been stolen. Okay, who is this? Mrs. Morton at 314 Maple Drive. <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't you live next door to Mrs. Burns? <laughs> well, uh, couldn't you come down here instead? Certainly not. I'm a taxpayer. All right, all right, I'll be there. Maybe I could sneak in without Mrs. Burns seeing me. Last time I saw her, she had me talking to myself. <laughs> oh, no. I'm doing it again. I'm surprised Gracie hasn't said anything about her watch being gone, but she doesn't need a watch. When she fixes three-minute eggs, she puts them in hot water, goes to the piano and plays the minute waltz three times. <laughs> of course, she always makes a few mistakes and has to start over. And I finish up with eggs that are as hard as if she had a watch. <laughs> Coincidentally, I just got a call from Bonnie Dean. He said his wife has been watching our show, and when she heard me say that she forgot to take the electric razor, she went back and got it. <laughs> oh, by the way, Sawyer, the detective, didn't get by Gracie. Not only that, but she told him that she stole the dresses. <laughs> the dresses? Yeah. Mrs. Burns. You sit down over here, please. <laughs> now, why did you do it? Why? Well, um, because I'm a kleptomaniac. A kleptomaniac? Oh, I didn't know what it meant either until Harry Von Zell told me. <laughs> um, Harry Von Zell says the reason I'm that way is because my husband doesn't give me any love and affection. <laughs> you must be a heel. Sure, so's my husband. What? He doesn't give me any insecurity. <laughs> Mrs. Burns, are you really a kleptomaniac? Well, certainly I am. It runs in my family. Now, take my sister Bessie. She was star for love. She tried everything to make her husband love her, but it didn't do any good. She even fixed things he liked for dinner. Every night she'd have fried chicken for him, and after dinner she'd sit on his lap and he'd run his hands through her hair. But he still didn't love her. He 
ran his hands through her hair and he didn't love her? Well, they didn't have any napkins and you know how fried chicken is. <laughs> What about the dresses? Oh, she wouldn't let him wipe his hands in her dresses. She's very neat. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that you stole those dresses because your husband doesn't give you any love and affection? And no kisses. Hey, I meant that. He didn't even kiss me at our wedding. Is this true? Well, certainly it is. I wouldn't even have been kissed then, except that uh, when I saw the men line up to kiss the bride, I got in line with them. Well, I'm sorry to see such a mess. Uh, uh, you want to put the cuffs on now, or would you rather have me go quietly? It's too late to worry about that. You're already gone. Hmm? Let's return the dresses, Mrs. Burns, and we'll forget about it. Oh, all right. I'll go out the back way. Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Goodbye. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A man with all your money letting your wife steal two dresses. Don't you know by not giving her any love and affection, you're turning her into a kleptomaniac? <laughs> Hi, George. Well, hello, Harry. Hey, what happened here? I came all the way over to help you polish the car like I promised, and I see I'm too late. I just heard Gracie's a kleptomaniac and that she stole two dresses. Oh, yeah. I know. I, I helped her steal them. You don't want two? No. Blanche Morton is the kleptomaniac. There must be a convention. Why don't you people wear badges? Well, let me tell you the whole thing, George. The Gracie and I were protecting Blanche Morton. Blanche Morton? Mrs. Morton stole two dresses from the May Company. Gracie and I took them out of her house so we could return them. Blanche? Not only that, but she stole Gracie's wristwatch and hid it in the sugar bowl. Oh, so that's what happened. <laughs> Harry, what actually took place was this. You see, Gracie left her watch in the kitchen, and I told Harry Morton to hide it so I could teach her a lesson. George, <laughs> when are you going to give up trying to teach Gracie lessons? You remember the light that was on the front porch? The one that she used to leave on all night? Yeah. You told her it was a bad habit and she'd have to break it, and she did, and it cost you $18 for a <laughs> I resent the way bachelors like Bonzel lorded over us married men. They act like men who stay single are smarter. They're not smarter, they're just faster. <laughs> I happen to know that Bonzel pretty nearly got married twice. But he lost his nerve when he had to step up and buy the license. But not me. When Gracie bought the license, I was nervous at all. <laughs> well, anyway, George was just trying to teach you a lesson. And here's your watch. Oh, Blanche, if I'd known this, I wouldn't have returned your dresses to the May Company. You took my dresses back? Mm-hmm. But don't worry. I left them at the exchange desk and I told the woman you stole them. And would she please exchange them for a couple of dresses that were paid for? <laughs> well, goodbye, honey. Don't worry about it. I'll... All right. Chrissy? Chrissy, honey, what are you doing? I'm making frosting for an upside-down cake. <laughs> This little brainstorm of mine made everybody believe that everybody else was a kleptomaniac. So can I have Gracie's watch? I'd like to put it back. Sure. <laughs> Me and my ideas. <sighs> it's gone. Gone. What are we going to do? I don't know what we're going to do, but you're going to buy another watch. Me? I'm not responsible. Oh, yes, you are. Now, George, I warn you. I got this for boxing. I got this for being a coward. <laughs> What's the matter? You forget something? Yeah. <laughs> Me and my lessons. Now I've got to go downtown and buy Gracie a new watch. While 
I'm back. The watch I took to teach Gracie a lesson cost $80. This watch I bought to replace it cost $120. The lesson is watches have gone up. <laughs> Where have you been? Downtown for an hour. Gracie, will you come in the kitchen? I'd like to show you something. I will, as soon as I finish my nails. Oh, boy, what a day I had. Really? Mm. With that May Company crowded. You know, the girl at the exchange counter was out to lunch, and so we all had to stand in line and wait. I was seven. Well, that's your lucky number. Mm -hmm. I asked the lady in front of me what she was exchanging, and she said, I have to return these shoes for my children because they're too tight. And I said, shame on you for allowing your children to drink. <laughs> well, that was telling her, all right. Then the line moved, and I was six. Oh, the girl came back to lunch. No, the woman in front of me moved back, back of the room. line. <laughs> and then the man ahead of me, he looked so peculiar. He had uh, a lot of hair on the sides of his head, but none on top. So I said, my, you must have grown awfully fast when you were a boy. You grew right up through your hair. <laughs> It was a nice way to break the ice. Mm, and then I was fifth in line. And moving up fast. Yeah. Oh, and then there were um, a man and his wife ahead of me. So I said to the woman, well, I hope that girl hurries back from lunch. And she said, oh, so do I. Because I have to make an exchange for my husband. His hat's too small. And you said? Why change your husband? Why not get him a bigger hat? <laughs> <laughs> and you're now fourth. Third. Oh, they both. <laughs> oh, and then this little fat man jumped out of line, and I was second. What'd you say to him? Nothing. He backed into my umbrella. <laughs> so is mine. Then the girl who was first in line was very pretty, but she was kind of rude. She was exchanging records, and she asked me, have you heard my cheating heart? So I came right back and said, no, but if your neckline was any lower, I could see it. <laughs> girl came back from lunch and you were at the window. No, I was in the back of the line. Back of the line? Mm-hmm. Why? I wanted to see what was going on. Everybody else was back there. And it's the lucky thing I did. I heard somebody say there was a crazy woman up front. Yeah, well, it's lucky to move. You know? Oh, oh hi. Hi, Blanche. Have either of you seen Harry? He's been gone for about an hour. No, look, uh, would you two come in the kitchen? I'd like to show you something. All right. All this trouble today was due to carelessness. First you lost your purse, then you left your watch laying around, and I thought you'd lose it. You mean this watch? <laughs> Where'd you get that? You gave it to me on our anniversary. I took it off when I was doing my nails. I just bought this. Another watch! Oh, it's beautiful, thank you. <laughs> George, I thought it over and you were right. I was responsible. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. But I've only got two arms. Blanche, you've always wanted one here. That's for you. Oh, thank you, honey. Oh, Gracie, isn't it wonderful when husbands teach you a lesson? Isn't it? <laughs> Folks, remember what the National Safety Council says. Whether you're a driver or a pedestrian, a moment's carelessness can change your life or take it from you. Accidents don't always happen to the other fellow. Well, be careful. The life you save may be your own. That's right. Say good night, Gracie. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Tonight's show was Jim Flavin as Detective Sawyer. The Birds and Allen Show was a film presentation.